Here we'll install the UUC lightweight flywheel. Note the dowel sleeve on the crankshaft lines up with the larger hole on the back of the flywheel. Install the flywheel on the crankshaft. Install the load distribution plate and the new bolts that come with the flywheel. Torque the bolts in a crisscross pattern to specification. Install the new clutch, again paying attention to the forward facing side and the rear facing side. Use our clutch alignment tool. On this one we don't have to remove the bolt, we can just leave it in place. The new pressure plate, which is not self-adjusting. Again, line up the dowel pins. And new bolts. We'll tighten the bolts in a crisscross pattern and use a torque wrench to finish our final torquing on the bolts. As you're tightening the pressure plate initially, make sure that the pilot bearing alignment tool slides freely in and out of the clutch disc. Once we have the pressure plate evenly tightened down, we'll use a torque wrench to do final tightening to specification. Now we're going to replace our various transmission seals, which are included in the clutch kit. We have the shifter shaft seal, we have the output shaft seal, and we'll also replace the input shaft seal. First, we'll replace the output shaft seal. Use the special 30 millimeter socket to remove the output shaft nut. Use a tool to hold the flange to keep it from turning. Make sure the tool is in a secure place that you don't break off any flanges on the transmission. In most cases, you do need an air tool to do this. Remove the nut. And we're now ready to pull off the output flange. Use a simple gear puller. Remove the flange and pry out the seal using a seal remover, a punch, or a screwdriver. We'll prep the new seal by lubricating the seal lip. We don't want the seal to go on dry. Insert the seal and use a tool to run the seal home. We'll use our 30 millimeter socket. It fits just right. Lubricate the splines on the output shaft with a little bit of the anti-seize compound. Use a toothbrush. We'll now remove the shifter shaft seal. We'll use a small screwdriver, tap it in between the seal and the shaft, and then we'll pry the seal out. This is going between the seal lip and the shaft itself. And there's our shifter shaft seal. Again, we'll lubricate the seal with the Liquimali anti-seize. Insert the seal into place, and we'll use another socket that fits over the uh, shifter shaft and approximates the outer diameter of the seal to tap it into place. Now we will install the output flange. We've lubricated the seal mating surface with the anti-seize compound, 
again using our socket as a press tool, tap the flange over the splines, install the nut, and torque to specification. Now we're going to replace our shift arm pivot pin, throw out bearing, and the release lever. Here's our old throw out bearing. Here's the release arm. And here's our pivot pin held in place with this spring. Here's our pivot pin mounting point. We'll also replace our input seal. Remove the guide sleeve. And there's our input seal. We'll remove the input seal by tapping a screwdriver through the seal and prying the seal out. Lubricate the new seal as we did the others. And we'll insert it into place. Note the spring around the seal lip that must be in place. This time we'll use a punch tool and a hammer because we don't have a socket that will fit all the way down over this. We'll work around the perimeter evenly, tapping the seal into place in an even level manner. Once the seal's in place, we'll reinstall the guide sleeve. Add a little anti-seize compound to the bolts and torque to specification. Now we're ready to install our new pivot pin and release arm. Here's our new pivot pin. We're using a metal pin in place of the standard nylon pin. Remove the spring Pinch the spring to remove the pin from the spring. Install the new pin. Lubricate the tip. And install on the new release arm. Now the new assembly is ready to install in the transmission. Slide the arm up over the guide sleeve. Insert the end of the pivot pin into the mounting hole and just tap it home with a hammer to make sure it's secure. We'll now install our new throw up bearing We'll lubricate the contact points of the throw-up bearing with a little bit of the anti-seize compound. Make sure the flats on the throw-up bearing align properly with the release arm. We'll now lubricate the input shaft splines with some of the anti-seize compound so the clutch disc over time does not stick on the input shaft and make it very light. You do not want any excess to fling off on the clutch disc. We'll now install a new shifter support arm bushing. Here's the old bushing. We simply pry it out of place. The slots in the side of the bushing engage with these tabs. Slide the new bushing up into place and tap it home. We're now going to lubricate the splines in the center of the clutch disc hub the same way as we did on the input shaft of the transmission. Again, less is better. We're now ready to install the transmission. Jack the transmission up into place Line up the input shaft 
and start inserting it into the clutch disc. When everything's lined up, the transmission will push up close to the engine block. Here we have our slave cylinder reinstalled on the transmission, and now we're remounting our transmission mount cross member. Remove our jack. Install our new flex disc. We recommend new bolts and nuts as the nuts are lock nuts. Install our shifter arm. Now on the shifter arm, typically we'll want to install the rear support bushing with the shift arm already installed in the bushing. Install the forward pivot pin on the shift arm. We've lubricated it with the anti-seize. Use a pry bar to bring that, uh, the clip on the securing pin down into place. Finish installing the shifter components. Again, watch our video on the short shift kit installation for details on these shifter parts. Here we're installing the DSSR shifter connector rod. Install the drive shaft, insert into the flex disc, push the center bearing up into place, and lightly install the center bearing mounting nuts or bolts. Once the flex disc is secured, we'll permanently mount the center bearing. The center bearing does require a preload. Push the center bearing forward from its natural point about a quarter inch. Install our heat shields. Now we'll prepare to connect the exhaust. We had one broken stud on this manifold. We drilled through the hole and installed a new bolt. Here we'll install the exhaust with new gaskets. We've put anti-seize compound on the studs and bolt. And with a helper, we'll slide the exhaust up into place. Secure with a couple of the nuts and run toward the rear of the exhaust and finish the rest of the installation and hangers. Okay, now we're finished with this job. Off camera, we finished up with a few brackets and cross members that we didn't show you on camera for the final installation phase. Everything's ready to go. We want to look at about a 500 mile break-in period before we do anything else with this clutch. Just normal street driving. Be gentle with the clutch. Now if you've liked this video, please feel free to hit your like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Additionally, you can send us some comments, your questions, let us know what you like what we're doing, and also let us know what you'd like to see. Now remember, everything you've seen is available at bavauto.com. Please go to our website, bavauto.com, and you can get all of your parts and your tools for a job like this or anything else you're doing on your BMW or your Mini. Thanks for watching. Now we've got another video to do.